Oh, good, good morning, and um, good as, as you, where you are. I, I am really honored to have this opportunity to participate. Every one of you are here because you wanted to be part of this outstanding program that combines the excitement of scientific discovery and the excitement of the medical specialty of anesthesiology. And what I want to talk with you about to show you is how important research is uh, within and to ASA. Next. And another. So the ASA is our professional society. It is member driven and it supports the, the amazingly varied interests of our 54,000 members. We define ourselves as leader in patient safety as Harriet began. We are forward looking, we are innovators. And to, to we anesthesiologists have identified what we call strategic pillars. These are paths to get done what we want to have done in our specialty. Next. Uh, how we accomplish those strategic pillars is with activities that uh, to me fall into three very large buckets. And the, the one portion of it that I'm going to be talking about today is the scientific uh, research and clinical information. Next. So ASA is governed by a board of directors. These are our specialties leaders. And most of the representatives are geography based, like from the different states. But also, in addition, our leadership has specific representation from the academic anesthesiology community. Mike Lewis, who's chair in Detroit, is the on the board of directors uh, as representing academic anesthesiology interests. Ron Pearl is the alternate director. In our structure, we also have a committee on academic anesthesiology, committee on research, a special science-focused advisory committee for the annual meeting, a, a, a caucus. All of these support ASA's mission of scientific research. Next. Now, we, ASA, recognize our outstanding researchers. We have awards for, the, for our, our, our amazing research leaders. One of these is the Excellence in Research Award. This is a, like a career pinnacle award, and it's for outstanding achievement in research. The, our peers, the researcher peers, choose these people and vote for them. And uh, they receive recognition at our annual meeting, receive the award there. Next. In addition, uh, we have a, a mid-career award. This is the Presidential Scholar Award that is specifically designated for people who are within 10 years of their first faculty appointment and are in practice and have already dedicated their career to research. And it covers um, all the, the newest, hottest topics from big data uh, uh, in perioperative medicine, uh, various clinical topics, and the most recent, recently on consciousness. Next. Uh, at the annual meeting, we have two named lectures. One of them is the, named after Dr. Severinghouse, as, as Harriet pointed out, on translational science. And it is really heartwarming to see in a convention center, this auditorium full of ASA members who want to come and learn about translational science. I think the theme you'll hear repeatedly is that uh, some of us are researchers, but the support for science and research really it, it pervades our organization. Next. Now, I also uh, want to just spend a moment there about the other part of academic practice, which is education. And we, in fact, have two educator awards that parallel what you saw on the research side. There's an Excellence in Education Award uh, for new teaching methods, uh, excellence in teaching, innovative educational programs, and again, a mid-career award that we have uh, ASA uh, reached out to do in collaboration with the Society for Education and Anesthesia for contributions to knowledge. And I'm proud to say I actually started both of these awards over my ASA leadership career. Now, at the annual meeting, we is where we all get together. So this is where we highlight a lot of what is important to us 
And these are some points about what we're doing to highlight the academic community and the research activities. Uh, what we do as an organization is work with the, those of our members, you in the future, who are dedicated to an academic career to make sure we're meeting those needs. We had this past year a dedicated research track, uh, numerous sessions, educational sessions that were led by our various affiliated uh, research interest groups. There was a research central, which where there was the opportunity for the, the really best abstracts that, with an extended face-to-face -face discussion time. And the importance of this is to develop a community of researchers, because this is best, absolutely best done uh, in a group and not alone. We had also a research lounge for the social aspects of being able to work together as researchers and uh, subspecialty uh, places in the annual meeting where the subspecialties could gather and discuss their research and activities as well. Next. Now, to point out that research is really for everyone. Our keynote speaker this year uh, is Francis Collins. He's the director of the NIH, and he's going to be talking about opportunities in biomedical research. I want to point out that unfortunately, like so much, this is not going to be, all 14,000 of us are not going to be able to go to DC in October. So we are going to have a virtual meeting. It's, a, it's, it's an, I'm, I'm involved with the development of it and it's an amazingly high caliber. We do expect to have uh, uh, Dr. Collins there either uh, talking live or, or recorded, we're still, but it's, it's really uh, falling into place really nicely. Next, uh, we also have ongoing collaboration with the academic community as part of the membership of what ASA does. I mean, one example, for example, this integration is really organic and it's ongoing. When COVID came out, uh, ASA partnered with AUA to get a central listing of the research activities that were going on so we could uh, um, support each other's research. One uh, other group I want to point out, and you've heard about already, and you're going to hear about a lot over the course of this particular program, is ESAS, the Early Stage Anesthesiology Scholars. And I'm just going to briefly introduce them. Um, these, these are an amazing group of young, uh, of, of young scientists. It's, they, it is, as they say, by and for early career anesthesiologist scientists. And membership is open to you. It's open to medical students, residents, fellows, junior faculty, all who are pursuing a career as an academic anesthesiologist to help keep you uh, in, with an academic community as an anesthesiologist on your research track. Next. Uh, we have also developed an anesthesia research council. And this here is a collaboration between FAIR, the uh, IARS and ASA uh, to work on initiatives related to the future of academic anesthesiology and anesthesia research. And what the group has been working on uh, to raising awareness of the need for research into anesthesia questions critical to public health uh, and uh, creating a clinical trials network and particularly on increasing the number of investigators continue the pool and the, the feeding uh, channels to develop the next generation of physician scientists in our specialty. Next. Now, in our political system, what organizations have to do is advocate to the government to get resources for what we think is important. And ASA does this for research. Every year, there is a uh, rally for medical research uh, in Washington. ASA is very active in this. Uh, it, the, what this group does is uh, their, their goals are to make funding for NIH a national priority and help the legislators understand that the funding is important because medical research is where the future is. Now, what you see in the middle there is a photo of, the, of a resident who uh, takes as a senior elective in their residency to work in Washington. And her project was uh, participating, because she was there at the time of this rally, uh, advocating for research 
And there she is with her congressman to particularly uh, get his votes to get more money to go to NIH. Next. Uh, also, in terms of advocating for more money for research, there's a, there's a ad hoc group for medical research. It's 300 members. But this is really a, a, a broad coalition. Patient groups are societies such as ours, research institutions, educators, industry, again, pushing to get more funding to go to the NIH as a matter of national priority and, in fact, national security. Next. So, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we want to not just talk about research uh, that is internal to anesthesiology, because a lot of what we do is actually acts to advance public health. And one of the uh, one of our most uh, uh, prominent initiatives is patient safety regarding brain health. This was an initiative started by uh, former ASA president, and we are uh, collaborating with uh, AARP to have uh, education and programs uh, for physicians and for patients to optimize cognitive recovery and the perioperative experience for the elderly patient. Next. Uh, one has to remember a highlight of our ASA's engagement in research is our journal, uh, where the mission is to promote scientific discovery and knowledge across the breadth of what we do. Next slide. Uh, anesthesiology is uh, what it does is provide the science and knowledge to lead and change this specialty. Again, it is among the broad membership, the 54,000 members, uh, the reading, the journal is viewed as the number one most used ASA member benefit. 73% of members say they, they look at it regularly. And there are other scientific metro, uh, metrics we have the highest impact of, uh, among journals in anesthesiology, uh, a, a enormous number of cita citations, and also it, steadily and increasingly we publish research that has enduring value. These are the, the, the inf science we are publishing goes back, is valuable for years. And what is in the journal is original in investigations, one-third basic science, two-third clinical science, and the clinical science end is mostly perioperative medicine and critical care and pain medicine, among the other things that it, it the, the other amazing science it does publish. Next. Uh, of course, we have to talk about support for FAIR. Uh, ASA created the foundation for anesthesia education research back in 1986 for the express purpose of supporting and developing physician scientists. And we continually uh, uh, to help uh, provide money to support it in addition to the really great fundraising that, uh, that, that FAIR does. And we work, ASA works, to promote the work of FAIR in the publications, the website, and the social media. That brings to one last point next is that uh, ASA uses, has a lot of uh, publicity, publication and media channels. There is the website, we have newsletters that go out and e-blasts and we have uh, presence on the social media. And we ask the central, the publications arm, ask the scientific community, what's important? What can we share with the rest of the membership and all of this is put out on an absolutely uh, regular basis. Next. Uh, so to finish, um, science truly is a core value of ASA. Uh, there is the interest in and support of research and science is interwoven into, in what ASA does. And I want to emphasize to you as future anesthesiologists and future physician scientists, ASA is your home for the career that you want. Thank you very much.